Hi, I'm Daniel Bergman. And I'm Robert Hansson. You're watching Fly TV, and today we're doing this. There's a dragon under your skin A friend that knows where you've been He's knocking at your door You let him in, let him in, let him in Hi and welcome back to Fly TV. Uh, I'm Daniel Bergman and today we're at the Kaitem River at uh, Shawnee Fishing Lodge and my guide here is Robert Hansson from Fish Your Dream and today we're gonna see if we can get some big trout on some pretty nasty streamers. Pretty nasty? Pretty nasty! <laughs> well I haven't really fished <laughs> these big streamers before in this river. Uh, it's gonna be uh, a lot of fun to see how they behave in the water. I mean there's a lot of movement in this. Yeah, they swim beautifully and it's a lot of meat. It's not optimal conditions for, for trout hunting. Staking sun, uh, yeah. it's not really the try to, trout weather, but uh, uh, we'll try some harder, tougher streams. Yeah. We have some movement in the, in the surface, usually they're less spooky. Yeah, in more the... like, a, like a ceiling. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get going. Yeah. We got the current is actually turning up here and coming straight towards us. And we got this really deep canal here uh, from the main current. And it goes all the way down there. And I figure since whoa, 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 whoa. It came up from really deep. Ooh, nice one. I downsized a little bit to a smaller belly scratcher minnow. And in the first layout, I hooked into a trout. Oh, don't go under there. Come on. Yay. So when um, you have total clear skies and a big sun up above, Sometimes downsizing your streamers might help. They're just beautiful and strong as hell. Whoop! Nice. Well, so I downsized to a, to a smaller streamer pattern. This is a belly scratcher minnow uh, from Curtis Fry, Flyfish Food. And this this one is actually weighted on the other side, on the underside, uh, with some tungsten beds. Uh, on on a wire it swims beautifully. Oh, let's get another one. So what streamer fishing usually looks like in Sweden is this: you throw it out and you let it swing, do nothing, let it swing, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. and then you swing it all the way down. And then you take it home, and then you go down a few steps, and you do the same th thing again. It's almost like salmon fishing. But there is actually so many different ways you can fish a streamer. Uh, we can start with throwing it upstreams and pulling it home a little bit faster than the current, which can be very effective when you're fishing for 
like holding spots that you think hold fish, like pocket water and stuff. This also allows the fly to sink quite well. Then, of course, you can do the traditional cross stream, 90 degrees, straight out. Let it swing, strip it a little bit. Let it swing, strip it a little bit. Just give, give the fly some action. And one excellent way can be when fishing just below quite turbulent water, you can just free drift it. Just throw it out and try to keep contact with the fly and just let it go with the stream. Because sometimes when the, the smaller bait fish go through these heavy rapids, uh, they get sort of paralyzed. And then the bigger fish are just waiting for them downstream in calmer water. There is actually only only your imagination that limits the ways you can fish a streamer. Well, the main thing is to get the fly in front of the face of the fish and make it bite. No matter if they're standing upstream, cross stream or downstream. This place we're fishing now, we have a stream just uh, a little bit further down here, but it's a really deep and long pool, uh, which uh, I have some very good memories from. This is a very, very typical place for big trout. Yeah, just a rod length away from me here, we have just complete darkness, which we're fishing. Uh, I'm placing uh, the, the fly every cast with a little reach mend upstream to get it to sink. And as you can see, there's not a fast current. So I'm probably fishing two or three meters deep, placing the rod just a, below the surface, then a fast retrieve. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, come on. Hooked into to something here. Whoa. It's worth fishing a little bit deeper now in the sun. <laughs> okay. Looks like this big stream is really work. Wow, beautiful trout. I hooked into one. Seems to be a nice fish. Almost a double hook up here. Nice one, Daniel. <laughs> I think it's his brother. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. It's a really bright sunny day, but it seems as if digging deep paid off. Look at that! <laughs> they're beautiful! And they're so fat. Hey, look mm. at this your guy's belly. It's like, Which it's one? like a fat pipe. Your guy's belly. Oh. Well, it seems as if we cracked the code. Uh, both are using the <laughs> same black belly scratcher minnow with a sort of a fluorescent red tag. And the eyes. Yeah, and, and the it. evil eyes. <laughs> they seem to like it, even though black might be like an evening color. But mm. Well, we had two trouts on the same spot. I yeah. think I will go back up a little bit. <laughs> might try. It might be like a whole school of them. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, men, hallo. Vad blir det? Hook up. Awesome, Daniel. Lovely. Look what I found. A bar of gold. <laughs> what a place! So cool!
Uh, this um, tossing big streamer business for angry trout is sort of a new thing here in Sweden. I don't think it's been practiced for more than five years or something. The first time I came in contact with it was uh, from a dear friend, Oskar Hagelin. That's an awesome uh, streamer fishing blog called Time Flies by Oscar. I just wanted to, for, for you guys who are new to this, I just thought I would show you some, some patterns, just a few examples that I'm using and have had some really nice fishing with. Uh, we can start with a uh, classic from streamer guru himself, Kelly Gallup. Uh, this is the Boogeyman. Uh, it's a really nice pattern that sort of imitates a bait fish. It has a really, really wide profile with a, with a wide head, which makes it sort of surf, surf the currents. Really nice fly in a variety of colors you can tie it in. And here we have a version of the, the first articulated fly I came in contact with. Oscar showed it to me. This is the articulated Provo hooker uh, by Colin Carson. Really cool pattern, really meaty. Uh, it's just a lot of rabbit and some feathers and I put some fluorescent stuff in there as well. Uh, throw this on a heavy sinking line and put it into a deep hole and there will be no hesitation. Uh, and then of course we have the sculpins. When fishing here in Sweden you can't really have too many versions of sculpins. Uh, this is a fellow I've sort of made up myself. It's mainly built up by uh, marabou, some craft fur and some uh, silly legs and a quite large sculpin head. It looks like nothing when it's wet in the air, but when it gets in the water, it sort of just pulsates. A uh, really deep diver, getting really deep on a, on a good sinking line. And last, but not least, uh, these guys have been producing really well for us. This is a pattern from uh, Mike Schmidt that I've sort of modified a bit. It's called the junkyard dog, uh, but instead of, a, of the regular marabou tail that Mike ties, I've replaced it with a wiggle tail. And this one is un actually unweighted, uh, so you fish this on, on quite a heavy sinking line, and uh, then you give it all the action with the rod actually, or how, the, how you strip the fly home. Uh, so that was uh, some of the favorite patterns I have. Uh, check out the American guys and use your imagination and tie some of this meaty stuff. Really works. It's a really fun to fish with. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now. Whoa! Good fish! No! <sighs> ah. Seems to be a better fish. Ooh, he's strong. Whoa, it's a nice grayling. This, Ooh. look at that. That is a big grayling. Look at that. What a beauty. So folks, that's how they get big. They eat fish, they don't eat more mayflies. Of course they do, but probably a part of their diet is uh, small bait fish and fries and stuff. Otherwise I'm having a hard time believing they get, get that size.
Ah, this is probably a grey link. <laughs> no! It's a baby trout. Look at this. This guy was hungry. Even small trout eat big bait. This fly is probably half his size. Yeah, it is. And he just hammered it. Imagine the size of flies you can use for the real big ones. Swim back and eat a real sculpin instead. When I show people these big guys, uh, they usually think it's pike flies. And then they, of course, ask me if I fish, fish them with a 9 weight or a 10 weight. But I, actually, I'm usually fishing a 6 weight, a 7 weight, or an 8 weight. Here I'm using a coastal rod called Kusk. It's a 6 weight, 9 foot. Really easy to cast even big streamers with. Uh, we're always fishing sinking lines for these big guys, almost always. And uh, here I have a 200 grain uh, sinking streamer line, which is, has a very thin diameter and it transports the fly out very well and it sinks very fast. Uh, when it comes to leaders, uh, there's no big fuss. I'm using meter of 0.38 and I taper it down to 0.33. Uh, total one and a half meter map maximum. Uh, I don't want to have a leader that's too long. That's going to make the fly ride too high in the water column, even though the line is quite deep. That's pretty much it. Uh, get yourself a nice sinking stream line uh, and a nice six weight or seven weight or whatever, and just get out there. Catch big trout on big streamers. It's fun. I promise you. Well, here you have a quite a shallow stream. Yeah. And then further down, it just goes down to a big hole. <laughs> big holes. We like big holes. Big holes holds big trout. So, sun is setting and we're approaching trout hour. We, we had some really tough sunlight the whole day. Mm -hmm. Now, conditions are starting to look good. Well, the. Um... In this area, we have a quite a. It's just in the beginning of a of a stream here, yeah. and uh, very flat surfaces. So this is a place where we rarely find any decent fish during daytime. No. But uh, now the approach this area, especially from the deeper parts further up, yeah. yeah, they go back up to hunt on this on these shallow waters. Yeah, on the more shallow parts. Yeah, we have seen a couple of splashes up here. That's yeah. So let's go get them. Let's do it. Yeah, whoa! <coughs> Awesome take, man! Ooh. It's going down, Daniel. Whoa! Yeah. That was a really fast retrieve. <laughs> Upstream mend and then they just fish this roly poly really fast. Yeah, yeah. He seems to be going down. <laughs> we have a problem that's it's an end of an island. <laughs> oh. I can't really follow so far. I think I can get it into a little bit slower water here. Yeah. It's oh, completely it golden. Like really nice fish. Should I net him? Yeah. I want to chase him. Wow, yes. there we go. <laughs> nice. That's a Ooh. nice fish. And he just went straight up to the surface. <laughs> Worth the run. <laughs> That's a beautiful trout, man. Look how high it is. <laughs> Very well fed. Yeah. Junkyard dog. 
Mike's, Mike Schmidt's cool pattern that I just hung a little wiggle tail on just to give it, give it some extra action. A night of night colors. Yeah. Mm. Let this beauty go back. Yeah. yeah. Where it belongs. Whoa! It wasn't sort of <laughs> not so tired. <laughs> it's really the end of an island. It's quite a rough stream down here. And you didn't have so much backing on. <laughs> Could have been an interesting swim. Yeah. Changing place. Having a nice evening stroll in the forest. Oh, look there. Did we spook it or no? Uh, I think so. Yeah. I don't know. It wasn't big enough. Anyway. Ah, it felt so good. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the charts have been taken on almost all kinds of retrieves. It can be quite creative. Yeah. Uh, when I've been waiting a little bit for the next cast, just holding the fly still in the water, they've been taken. And these very quick retrieves, they've Whoa. been taken as well. Did you have one? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh -huh. <laughs> I did a mend. When I tightened the line, there was something. Whoa. Whoa, big fish, big fish. Oof. Whoa, awesome, Daniel. Ooh. That was an awesome take. I was fishing an all black wiggle tail, junkyard dog pattern. And this baby, it's, ah, uh, I ain't, ain't no monster, but. Yeah! <laughs> ah. It's almost 11 o'clock and it's starting to get really dark. <laughs> and this buddy hit me straight in the face. The take was so hard. An all black wiggle tail fly. Yeah, and I can, <laughs> I can see it's not a small tail you put on there. <laughs> no, just a small before, but it felt better with the bigger one. Fat as a pig and golden yellow. You can really see why you call them brown trout. Put you back to where you belong. <laughs> awesome. Well done. Fun in the darkness here. Let's get one more on the wiggle tail. Yeah, <laughs> go and grab one. Oof. Big splash. So exciting, I can't even see it. I have it on the wrong length away. I don't see anything. Well, I think this is a, it's really running. I have it on the rod length away, but I can't even see what it is. Did you net yours? Nice, Daniel. I have a two kilo trout in my net. Oh, <laughs> let's go inside, Daniel. This is a nice fish. Okay, awesome uh, fish in the <laughs> in the middle of the night. <laughs> it looks like a sea trout. Yeah, definitely. Double fight in the middle of the night. Worth <laughs> 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 stay up for. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in this river, as since a couple of years, what? sorry, <laughs> since the last couple of years, these are protected and there are no kill in this river. So I'm, I'm very happy about that. Yeah. And, uh, and here we see the results. Yeah. So many spots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when we fish this quite close to the surface tonight. Yeah. Uh, quite fast. Yeah. And they're very visible because they're <laughs> quite big. Yeah. And um, yeah, they seem to work. Yeah. Go back into the dark. That way. 